Welcome to our Christmas services this evening. It's great to have you here. I'd encourage you to follow along in, uh, on the screen or in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen His glory. Oh, come, let us worship Him. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have seen God's glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. For it has come to being in him was God, and the light was the light of all people. Tonight Christ is born, tonight salvation appeared. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A candle has been lit each Sunday during the season of Advent to signify the entrance of Christ the light into the world. Today we lit, we light the fifth candle, the Christ candle. This white candle reminds us that Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God, sent to wash away our sins. His birth was for his death. His death was for our birth. John 1, first, verse 29. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. This poem promises deliverance from Assyrian oppression, a hope based on the birth of a royal child with a name full of promise. While Judah's king will practice justice and righteousness, the real basis for faith lies in God's passion for the people. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The reading begins. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, 
Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of our Lord. The second reading is from Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The appearance of God's grace in Jesus Christ brings salvation for all humanity. Consequently, in the present we live wisely and justly. 
while also anticipating the hope of our Savior's final appearance. The reading begins. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. <clears throat> the Christmas Eve gospel is from Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. God's greatest gift comes as a baby in a manger. Angels announce the good news and pro of great joy and proclaim God's message of blessing and peace. The Gospel reads, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated.
I'd like to invite all the children up for a children's message. Come on up to this area around here. Hi, guys. Hi. Come on in. Have a chair just right down on the, on the, on the floor, right in front so you can see. So at Christmas time, uh, you hear lots of bells, don't you? Uh, places are uh, people are ringing bells, kind of, um, you know, making making noise with bells. What what do you normally hear? Where where are bells normally rung? Churches. Churches. Yeah, we have we have a bell that we ring in our steeple, don't we? Schools. schools? Back in the olden day schools. Sure. Yep, in the olden day schools. Yep. That's right. Maybe we can do it in like, in like bulbs. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where else do you hear bells rung? After, uh, uh, do you hear? Songs? Uh-huh. Sure, right, in songs. Jingle bells. Jingle bells, right, very good. And what about, what about the ones outside of stores that you hear people ringing and then they... they in the uh, store. Like, I, I've gone to the grocery store and they were ringing. Yep. Well, then I got to put money in. You got to put money in? Yeah, very good. Yep, so bells, bells are there and they get our attention. They announce something. And, and today we have, we have little um, bells here that, that we're going to give to you guys as a, as a Christmas gift. And you can hang them on your tree. What these bells do is they remind us. They remind us that, that Christmas is a time for celebration because bells are, are about celebrating and, and joyful things. And, and it's, it's a reminder we that know. Jesus has come. Huh? We know Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Bells ring at Christmas. And, and so it's a reminder for us that Jesus has come and Jesus is the light of the world. And so we sing and we're joyful because of what Jesus has done for us, right? And that's what the bells remind us of. So this year, when you get home, you can hang this on your Christmas tree. And then next year, um, you can bring it out after you've packed it away. And you can say, oh, I remember the bell reminds us that Jesus has come and that we are to celebrate Jesus' birth. Jesus came in Bethlehem, which is uh, a long ways away from here, but he came, he came, and, and he's with us now as in, in spirit. So Jesus is always in the world around us now. He came, well, he, yeah, he's in heaven, but he's also with us too. Yeah, Jesus is God. Jesus is in our heart. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, we're getting into a theological discussion here at this point. <laughs> I think I'm going to send these bells home with you before we get too deep. And wish you guys a Merry Christmas. But do we each get two You each get a bell. Yep, you each get a bell. These were made by one of the members of our congregation. They don't think that much. And they're, they're kind of... They're kind of uh, quiet bells, a little bit quiet, but they remind us. Yeah, see, I can hear them. Can you guys hear them out there? Yeah, sure. Okay, you can go back to your seats with your folks. Merry Christmas to you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the wonder of this night, for the joy that is ours as we celebrate the birth of our Messiah. We pray that you would lighten the darkness, enliven the world with your peace and love and joy. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. What makes Christmas so special? What, what, what's that certain feeling that we look for all that time that we prepare for Christmas? You hear about it in the Christmas songs that are played, how, how we're kind of looking for a special feeling. And as you watch that Christmas movie channel that's on a lot at uh, various places, there, the, the, the Christmas spirit is there. People are, are going for the Christmas spirit. And there's a certain message that speaks of family relationships, gathering around fireplaces, emotional and physical warmth, lots of food, and love. The word that comes to my mind is festive. Certainly this is a huge part of the Christmas holiday season. We want to feel good. We want to be happy. We want to have a positive relationship. And we want to be loved and to love. Gathering with family and friends is a very important part of this season. Sharing our love and our care with others as we enjoy their company, gather around holiday tables with lots of good food, relaxing from our busy routines. It's without a doubt what makes the holiday festive and joyful. And without the blessings of family gathered together, this could be a stark, cold time. And it is for those who are alone or homeless or in hospitals and nursing homes. And it was pretty stark and bleak that first Christmas as well. Two young people from the, torn away from the comforts of home and family with no place to stay, find themselves in a place with animals surrounding them as the young woman gives birth to their firstborn son. It wasn't the jubilant celebration that was envisioned for the birth of a king. It wasn't what the people thought would happen when the Messiah came to rescue them from the dark, hopeless time they were living in. The hope that is expressed in the lesson from Isaiah chapter 9 tonight is for the inauguration of a new king, King Hezekiah, most likely, in Judah. And at the time, they had very little hope for the future. It was a bleak time. This prophecy that Isaiah brought has been used for the coming of the Messiah and of the hope that the Messiah would bring, not just for a king, but for a Messiah, a special king. Christians have used this prophecy as a sign of hope in the fulfillment that is found in Jesus, the child born in Bethlehem. That we come tonight looking for a word of hope in our world. We look for more than what the bleakness of the world, the coldness of the night can bring. We look for more than the commercials and the movies can give us. We look for something more than a feeling. We come to worship the newborn king. We come looking for answers to the problems in our world that we face each day. In a world of cancer, of COVID scares, of sickness, death, and constant hype, we look for respite and hope. In a world of continuing, even escalating violence, we seek peace and love. In a world of narcissism, self-centeredness, and disregard for people's lives 
and personal or emotional well-being. We long for kindness, gentleness, and respect. We come together to worship the baby in the manger because Jesus is the only hope for this broken world and our sinful existence. The joy and the excitement that we find in our hymns, our scripture readings, and in our hearts is for the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight we celebrate his birth with a candlelight service. This speaks to the message from Isaiah, which says to us that the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. In our opening dialogue, we also reiterated Isaiah's prophecy when we said that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Words also from the Gospel of John. It's like a candle burning in a dark room. No matter how dark a room is, the candle can always be seen. Its light shines and overcomes the darkness. It shines through the darkness and brings light into the room. Jesus is the light in our world. He is the hope of the world mired in sin, sickness, and violence. As the star shone brightly over Bethlehem that holy night, the shepherds and the wise men saw it. In the sky where they were living, it showed them the way to find the baby in the Bethlehem manger. Jesus brings hope for better lives, for the promise of eternal life, for all who believe in him. He is the light of our future. He is our future. Jesus is the light that overcomes the darkness, the darkness of our sin and of the world around us, bringing us into the glorious light of God's presence. Jesus comes to us at Christmas and forevermore saying, I forgive your weaknesses, your faults, your times that you covet, the mistakes that you've made, the times that you forget me, the times that you hate. Come to me and find rest in me. Find security in my light. Find forgiveness in my death and life in my resurrection. When we sit in a dark place, whether it's physically or emotionally, we start to imagine all sorts of things. Fear takes control of us. We can imagine all sorts of frightening things as our minds get carried away. When we turn on the lights, those fears are shattered because the light overcomes the darkness and exposes what is around us. We find security in the room when the room is lit. When Jesus comes into our hearts and our lives, the fear and the darkness associated with God is shattered. Christmas is all about Jesus coming into the world and into our lives. Christmas is Emmanuel, God with us. God has come to live with us, to share life with us, to be with us through those ups and downs that we experience, that we have been going through the last couple years. All that we have seen of Jesus is what we know of God. He is God. He is human. As you deal with the cold and the darkness of the world today, you're not alone. The Savior of the world has come. He's taken on your burdens your sin, your fear, and he has conquered it in his death and on the cross. The joy of Christmas 
leads to the exaltation of the resurrection. It's not only that Jesus has come, but Jesus has conquered sin and death, giving us hope, walking with us through those dark days and bringing us through them to the light of his resurrection. We can have peace in our lives and courage to face the future because Jesus has come. We can have joy and comfort in times of pain and struggle, even death, because Jesus has come. He truly is Emmanuel, God with us. We're not alone to face the future. We are his now and will be forever. Amen. Merry Christmas. our Christmas offering, and that will be divided between the World Hunger Appeal and Lutheran World Relief.
We will now uh, begin our candlelight portion of the service. Uh, you may be seated for that. As, as we uh, begin the service, the lights will dim as, as the candles are lit. I would ask that as the ushers come down and light your candles, that you always keep the lit candle upright for obvious reasons, but... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory Glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the increase of peace among the nations, let us pray to the Lord. For the spread of the joyful news that the Savior has come, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and those who find no room, let us pray to the Lord. For the renewal of the whole church in unity, let us pray to the Lord. For the light of Christmas to shine on us all, let us pray to the Lord. Rejoicing in the birth and trusting in your mercy, O Christ, light of the world, we commend all for whom we pray. Amen. So tender and mild, 
We can turn the lights back on now. Let us join, uh, please rise and let us join in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.